There's a couple of really strange things related to gout that I want to discuss. Why is it that 70% of people with gout have high blood pressure? I mean, that's, that's weird, especially since uric acid, which most people know that gout is a problem with uric acid building up in your big toe, is considered a powerful antioxidant. If it's an antioxidant, then why is it associated with high blood pressure? And why is it associated with so much pain in your right big toe? So that's what we're going to sort out today. And I have some interesting conclusions and ideas. If you have gout, you're going to be very glad you watched this video. You know, it's not just high levels of uric acid in your blood that's causing gout because they found there's no correlation between levels of uric acid in the blood and gout attacks. But they do know the pain of gout is this uric acid crystal formation, creating a lot of inflammation. So what is going on here? Well, what they do know, your kidney is not able to get rid of this uric acid effectively. It, it tends to retain uric acid. And then somehow it leaks into the joint of your big toe and it forms crystals. The main medication for gout is called allopurinol. And what that does is it inhibits the formation of uric acid. There's an enzyme called xanthine oxidase, which helps you make uric acid. So this medication blocks that enzyme, thereby lessening the amount of uric acid. Now, the problem with this medication is it creates all, some side effects and um, some pretty major side effects. So a lot of people don't like to take it. So they're searching out for alternative methods to help their gout. But I think once you understand some of these things I'm going to talk about and sort out some of these mysteries and paradoxes, you'll have a solution. A common natural remedy for gout is celery seed. Another common remedy would be tart cherry. And both of these can actually inhibit that enzyme. And that's probably why they do help a certain amount of people. But there's a couple other points to this problem that um, I want to bring up. Number one, why is there such a high correlation between gout and uh, high blood pressure and cardiovascular problems? That's kind of a mystery. That relates to this paradox, this uh, information that's kind of conflicting. Because uric acid is considered an antioxidant as well as a pro-oxidant. Now, that's the conflicting information. So how can it get rid of inflammation, but cause inflammation? If it's such a powerful antioxidant in your blood, then why is it associated with heart problems, okay? Why is it one of the strong predictors of heart problems? In fact, it's also linked with insulin resistance and even liver fat, but how can this be if it's supposed to be an antioxidant? So let me just kind of go through a couple interesting points about this. Number one, and this is what I found out, uric acid inhibits nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is what a lot of people are trying to increase to lower blood pressure, to help their hearts, to protect the inside of the arteries. And it's considered a powerful antioxidant. It's a potent vasodilator. Okay. So it just, it relaxes the blood vessels. So it's really good for high blood pressure. Other people try to increase it for other reasons like erectile dysfunction, because if it's a potent vasodilator, it can help with erections. And so people take uh, Viagra, for example, which increases nitric oxide, uh, or they might take a natural form of that called L-arginine, which increases nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is a powerful antioxidant, but uric acid inhibits this nitric oxide. I mean, if you even think about what happens to a gout patient with, with their big toe, you're getting a tremendous amount of inflammation. You're getting a lot of free radical damage. You're getting a lot of oxidative stress, right? And if you don't have this nitric oxide to counter that, you're gonna have a problem. The other point I wanna bring up, and this is interesting, nitric oxide can help regulate that enzyme that uh, makes uric acid. So it can help decrease or inhibit this xanthine oxidase. But on the flip side, if you have uric acid, that's going to inhibit nitric oxide. So what's going on? I really think what's really going on at a deeper level is there must be some type of a genetic weakness that sets someone up for this problem with the inability to eliminate uric acid and maybe even the inability to produce enough nitric oxide or absorb enough nitric oxide. But that being said, um, I'm going to cover some other points that relate to this. Coming back to this celery, this phytonutrient that can help increase nitric oxide, 
is not really present in large quantities in the stock, but it is present in the celery seed extract in larger amounts, as well as the celery leaves, okay? Those little things that you kind of cut off and don't eat, right? Those are the things you need to eat if you have gout. It's the leaves of the celery. Now, you can also get this phytonutrient from artichokes. Artichokes is a good source, also sage and thyme. And you can also get it in a lot of other leafy greens as well. But I'm just pointing this out that um, there's even people that have claimed to get rid of their gout by taking artichoke. Another common remedy would be to actually lower your sodium chloride. Apparently, salt inhibits nitric oxide, especially if someone is salt sensitive, okay? When I read that line, okay, in this article, a little thing popped up in my mind because anytime someone mentions salt sensitivity, what they're really describing is the potassium deficiency because you really no longer become salt uh, sensitive if you get enough potassium. And so now the question is, what is the relationship between potassium and nitric oxide? Well, apparently potassium increases nitric oxide in a potent way. And this could also be the reason why uh, quite a few anecdotal reports um, indicate that taking potassium can help reduce gout. And so you have this restriction of sodium that helps gout and this taking potassium that helps gout. Personally, I think it's the ratios. If you get the ratios just right, I think you're going to be in good shape. But if you have gout and you're taking a lot of sodium, that could potentially be a problem. I always recommend having sufficient amount of uh, salt, especially sea salt. But for some people with gout, maybe it's not the best idea. Maybe you restrict your salt, but you start really increasing your potassium to the level where uh, maybe your gout can go away. Now, the other thing related to potassium is that diuretics, okay, deplete potassium. They also get rid of sodium. And diuretics are linked with decreasing nitric oxide as well as uric acid. And potassium is alkaline. And so we also know that if you alkalize your urine, you'll have less gout attacks. Another interesting connection, omega-3 fatty acids also increase nitric oxide. Okay, and uh, we know that omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory. And so the real big idea with nitric oxide is this, it's an antioxidant, okay? And if you have inflammation in your big toe, uh, you need antioxidants and nitric oxide could just be what you've been missing. And there's also some additional data about uric acid that I'm gonna bring up now. Is it an antioxidant? Is it a pro-oxidant? Well, I think it's both because there's some data that when it gets into the tissues, intracellular, it becomes a pro-oxidant, which would make a lot of sense because if this uric acid gets into your arteries, or let's say it gets into the joint, then it starts creating inflammation. That's why we need nitric oxide because it's not only an anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant as well. There's another term I want to introduce you to, and it's called an inflammasome, a protein that is within the immune system that you're born with. And apparently this inflammasome triggers a cascade of inflammatory things that happen, a gout attack. And nitric oxide is a potent suppressor of this inflammasome. What are some other things that can trigger a gout attack? Well, you have fructose. And when people have fructose, oh my gosh, they just have a worsened attack. And uh, it just so happens that fructose and sugar decrease nitric oxide. All this is very interesting, but what can we do as action steps? Number one, increase your potassium, okay? Both from foods and supplement form. If you get it as electrolyte powder, you can do that. Or if you get it in pills, you're only going to find it in like uh, 99 milligram tablets. So you might need to take uh, several of them several times through the day. Or if you're doing it in an electrolyte powder, you can take several scoops through the day, just spread it out. That'll give you enough potassium. Also eat foods high in potassium. At the same time, I would recommend if you have a bad gout case to reduce your sodium. Just don't add a lot of sodium. I think that's going to help you because remember, sodium or salt inactivates this nitric oxide. The next thing is to eat foods that can spike nitric oxide. Uh, 
like the leaves and the celery, okay, the tart cherry, um, artichokes, leafy greens. Number four, avoid fructose and sugar. And the last tip, and this is another important thing, which I think can help you, you want to support the kidney with something that can help eliminate this uric acid. There's a product I used to use in practice called arena food. That's a good thing to order and take if you have gout. Now on the note of potassium, very important mineral. Okay. If you haven't seen my video on potassium, I'm going to put it up right here. Check it out.